What you doing? I'm just reading the CNN article for class. I'm not believing this guy at all. He claims that nuclear fusion is the perfect energy source. How can something nuclear be perfect? Whoa, whoa, just wait a minute. You're getting really worked up. I mean, it's just an article, right? I guess. So, I mean, I don't know. Let's go have a study break or something. Okay, what do you want to do? Hmm, let's play pool. This article is still totally bugging me. Nuclear power is so destructive. How can they call it perfect? Okay, just, just wait a minute. I mean, do you know what nuclear reactions are? Do you know how they work? Well, duh. They work like this. Scientists take an atom and they split it into two. That's how the nuclear bombs worked in World War II. Duh. Well, that's true. That's one type of nuclear reaction. That's fission. But there's another type, too, called fusion. Oh, fusion. Like, the fusion between us right now. Um, no, I'm talking about nuclear fusion. If you take two very light atoms and you bring them close enough together, they'll just snap together and give you some energy. Hey! Hi! Um, did, did you follow me to class? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask you how, uh, about fusion. You know, it creates a lot of energy and I'm still not really sold on this idea. Can't it be used for a bomb? Well, um, lucky for you, I was actually on my way to my professor's office, so I guess you can come along and ask about it. Sounds good. Um, how about some coffee after so you can help me with this article? Uh, we'll see about that. So, what's the difference between a fission bomb and a fusion bomb? Okay, well, what a fission bomb is, is you assemble enough of this very heavy material so that it, um, it gets slammed together very quickly. You have to bring it together very quickly. And then it begins an exponential growth, I guess from your point of view, an exponential growth in the amount of uh, fission power produced. And then there's a race between that exponential growth of fission power and the thing disassembling. And if you design it right, then you get a, a, a very big and dangerous explosion. That's a fission bomb. A fusion bomb start with a fission bomb. It's maybe not such a big fission bomb, not the biggest possible fission bomb. And it makes a big burst of x-rays. And the x-rays you arrange to bounce around in a chamber and one way or another compress and then ultimately heat up a bunch of this fusion fuel and then, then you can make a secondary explosion with the fusion. And that can be more powerful than the first one. So Professor, how do fusion reactors work? So this is a model of a fusion reactor. And the yellow is the vacuum principle. And so what we do there is we take all the air out, it's sealed up, and we put just a small amount of hydrogen gas back inside. The red that's inside it represents the plasma. After we've heated up the gas and created this very hot plasma, it goes around the entire side of the vacuum vessel, and the confinement is occurring from these gray loops which represent the magnetic field. Take this, make it really big, and that's a future. Okay, but think about what happened in Japan. Nuclear reactors are dangerous. Well, the nuclear reactor in Japan was a fission reactor, not a fusion reactor. And there are three big differences between fission and fusion reactors, which make fusion reactors much safer. First of all, fission can occur spontaneously in a natural setting. Meanwhile, for fusion to occur, atoms have to be confined in, say, a magnetic field and raise to temperatures of 100 million degrees or more. That's hotter than the sun. So, fusion requires a lot of effort to sustain, and fusion reactors will never melt down by themselves like fission reactors. You simply turn off the power and the fusion stops. Also, fission reactors use uranium or plutonium to produce electricity. They're both radioactive, and the recycled plutonium can be used to make bombs. Finally, fusion power produces much less radioactive waste, and if the right atoms are chosen, it produces none at all. Hmm. So I guess there was something to that article. Nuclear fusion really does seem like the perfect energy source. So, where are these fusion reactors? Well, we don't have any working fusion reactors yet, but scientists and researchers are working on it right now, and we should have one in as soon as 10 years. 10 years, huh? Hopefully you'll go on a date with me before that happens.
Well, aren't we on one right now?